Hello and welcome to Subwatch TV. And today on Subwatch TV, we are looking at Circle Theorem, one of the topics in our SHS syllables. And I will urge everyone to watch to the end so we understand this topic because it's, 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 it's somehow a problem for a lot of people. So I'm taking my time to explain the tips and tricks in this topic so that we all understand very, very well. Now, before we start with this topic, I'll urge every one of you to subscribe to the channel and also click the notification icon for my next video because there are more topics coming. So kindly subscribe to the channel and also click the notification bell. Thank you very much. Now let's go straight to circle theorem. Now, before we start the topic, I would, I would like us to talk about circles. I would like us to talk about the part of circle and also what uh, the what circle itself is now i have a circle now circle has parts every circle has parts like like part of part of whatever we know maybe part of the human body or part of anything that we know so a circle also has parts so we look at the parts of circle and also look at um the we look at the meaning or what it mean to say a part of a circle now, the first part we want to talk about, it is the line that I drew making the circle. Uh, a circle does not have sides. So I just drew a, a, something round and called it a circle. Now, that thing round is called a circumference. That is what made me draw the circle. If I draw a square, if I draw a square, I'll call these lines the perimeter. If I draw a square, I'll draw this line, I'll call these lines a perimeter. That is the fence. That's the fence of that square. The fence of that square. I'll call it a perimeter. Or more example, in a farm, if, if we go to the farm, the fence that people do around their farm to prevent animals from coming to eat the, coming to eat the, uh, the, the thing planted, we call it a fence, right? So that fence is a perimeter. That fence that the person did to protect the, uh, the food crops that the person is growing is called the perimeter. We can call it the perimeter because it is the fence of the farm. Now let's come back to our circle. Now this circle has a, something we call a center and the center is the middle of the circle. So let's take this as the middle of the circle. Let's take this as the middle of the circle. Now, also, we also have something we call a diameter. A diameter is a line that divides the circle into two equal parts. So if I draw a line like this, dividing the circle into two, that line is what I'm talking about. It's called a diameter. It divides the circle into two equal parts. And if it divides a circle, one part is called a semicircle, meaning half of a circle. Are we good? We also have something we call a radius being a part of a circle. Now the radius is half of a diameter. So this is a full diameter and half of a diameter is from the center to the circumference. So if I draw this from the center to the circumference, it's called a radius. So this from here, half of a diameter from here to here is a radius. And this and here also is what? A radius. And two, two radius or one or Two or more radius are called radii. Two or more radius is a radii. Are we good? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a chord. Now, a chord is a line that does not pass through the center of the circle, but it touches the two, side, uh, two points on the circumference. Again, a chord is a line that does not pass through the center but touches two points on the circumference but the diameter it passes through the center and touches two points on the circumference so if i draw this it is a chord because it touches one side of the circumference over here and touches another one here but does not pass through the center of the circle even if i draw it here even if i draw it here almost half of the circle, but it does not pass through the center. It is still a chord because it doesn't pass through the center. Good. We also have a quadrant. Now, what is a quadrant? Now, if I have a circle and I divide a circle, the circle into four, quad. Quadrant is from the word four, Q-U-A-D, quad. And quad means four. So if I divide the circle into four, 
if I have a circle and divide the circle into four equal parts, one side is called a quadrant. One side is called a quadrant. So if I divide this circle like this, this side is a quadrant. Now, one more side we want, I want us to talk about is the arc. Now, I told you that um, the, 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 the fence of the circle is called a circumference. But we can also have parts of that circle. Parts of that circle. Uh, sorry, parts of the circumference. So it may be from here to here. It's called an arc. It is part of a circle. It doesn't make a full circumference, but it just takes part of it. Now, one topic that we, we, we normally see arcs, it's a, a, a geometric construction, or popularly known as construction. Now, under that topic, we draw arcs. When we are drawing angles, we draw arcs, because it, if we put a point there and decide to draw the arcs sec round, we know that we'll get a circle. But we don't. We just put it there and construct an arc. Let's say we are drawing 90 degrees. We draw our semicircle on the line. We mark, we mark. Then maybe we stand on this side, then construct an arc. And what, what I mean is, if I extend this arc, I'll get what? A circle. So we call this an arc. Good. And the last but not least I wanted to talk about is the sector. Now, the sector is made up of two uh, two radius, that is a radii. So this side, from here to here, is a radius. And from here to here, is also a radius. So this side I have over here, is called a sector. It's made up of two radius. And the space that the cord also makes over here, is called a segment, here. It's called a segment. So there's a sector and that is a segment. So now we know about circles. So I want us to start with the, the, the theories of a, a circle. And we have about eight of them. So we'll take it one after the other, look at them, and also look at some examples under them. Stay tuned. Now this is how our first theory looks like. It says that if I have a circle, and I have some, dark, some lines in it, it could form a triangle or not. But there are some properties, as far as the circle is concerned, there are some properties that we have to obey. Now, it says that, you see, if we have something like this, if I have this, if I have here A, if I have here B, and I have here C, how will I call this angle? I'll call this angle, angle B, A, C, or angle A, Angles, angle B, A, C, or angle C, A, B. Then I'll do, I'll put this here, showing the angle, or I bring it up here. So this is how I'll refer to the angles as we have over here. So I'll refer to these angles by their right name. So please, I want you to follow what I'm doing. Now, this angle here is called angle A, C, B. And this angle here is called angle, let's call here O. This is called angle A, O, B. Now, what the theory is saying that if I have a chord that is subtending at an angle to the circumference, and that same chord is bringing another substance uh, uh, substanding to the circle, the angle that is formed at the circle and the angle at the circumference, they have a relation. Let me take it in the normal sentence. I'm saying that if I have an invisible, we see we can have a chord here. And the chord is invisible, right? So if we have a chord here, and the chord has a line to the circumference of the circle from two points on the circumference uh, on the uh, on the chord, so A and B, they all move to one side of the circumference, and also it moves again to the center of the line. The angle that is formed at the circumference and the angle that is formed at the center of the circle, they have a relation, and the relation is very simple. If I if, this, the angle that is formed at the circumference is A. If the angle formed at the circumference is A, the angle formed at the center is 2 of that A. Is 2 of that A. In, in writing terms, I will say 
a equal to 2 of a which means that if i have if i have here to be 40 and i want to find this angle i'll just multiply the 40 by 2 and i'll get this one in normal sense if i have angle a o b to be let's say angle a o b is 40 and i'm to find angle a c b this angle is 40 if i want to find this it is angle a o b divided by 2 and i'll get that angle over here the same way if i have angle a if i have angle a c b and i want to find angle a o b i'll just multiply 2 of angle what a c b and i'll get it so simple like that let's take a question now if we have this as a question he said we should find a if x here is 100. now from the theory it says that if i have the angle that subsent at the circumference is a the one at the circle is what 2a now we are saying that this x here is 100 and we want to find this one we know that this angle means two of this so we know that angle a o b is equal to two of angle a c b and but angle a o b equals 100 so we get 100 equals to two of angle a c b 100 equals 2 of angle ACB. Now we are finding angle ACB. So what do we do? We divide both sides by 2. Then we have ACB, that is angle ACB being equal to 50 degrees. So it means, so if, if we compare, if this is 50, and we compare this to the theory, the theory says that if I have here to be A, and I want to find this, it is 2 of the A, as we have over here. So let's look at here. This is A and this is 2A. So if this is 50, here will automatically be what? 100. Are we good? Are we good? Now let's take another example. Now we are finding this. They say we should find ACB, this angle. If triangle OAB is isosceles and also OAB angle, this angle here is 40. Now, what do, you, what do we mean by tri triangle OAB is an isosceles? What are the properties of an isosceles triangle? An isosceles triangle looks like this. And it means that those, these lines are equal. These lines are equal, and the base angles here are also equal. So, and why is it an isosceles? Because from the chord, you know, they all move to what? The same center. And this is a radius, and this is also a radius. So, you two radius with a chord will give you an isosceles triangle. Are we good? Because the a radius from any from the center to anywhere of the circle are the same. So the question is also telling you like that this side is 40. Are you good? And because it's an isosceles, if this side is 40, automatically this side is also what? 40. Are we good? And we can use this and this and this to find x. So because Triangle OAB is isosceles. Then, because triangle OAB is an isosceles, then angle OBA is also 40 degrees. Hence, OAB plus AOB plus OBA equals 180 degrees. And why is it that? Because angles in a triangle sum up to what? 180 degrees. So OAB is 40 degrees plus X plus another 40 equals 180. Then we have, so this one, when we simplify, we're going to get X equals 180 minus 80. Then we get X to be what? 100 degrees. So it means that this side is 100 degrees. But what are we asked to find? We are asked, we are asked to find 
A, C, B, this angle. So knowing this angle, it will make this one very simple for us to find. So how do we find it? It's very simple. We know that, we know that angle A, O, B is equal to two of angle A, C, B. And we know, and we know A, O, B to be 100, which is equal to two of a, C, B. So we divide both sides by 2. Then we get A, C, B as an angle is equal to 50 degrees. So simple like that. So simple like that. So that is all about the first theorem. Let me know what you think about the first theorem. And let's move on to the second theorem real quick. Okay, so before we move to the theory 2, I have this question for you to try. Under the first theorem. Please do it. And after you are done with it, uh, you play the video, then you see your answer. So kindly write the question down, solve it, then after that, after you play the video, you get the answer to the question. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have S equals, you, you, your, your answer should be 156 degrees. The reason being that angle P O Q, angle P O Q is equal to two of angle P R Q. So if POQ is X, then it's be two of what? The angle we have here, that's 78. That's 78. Then if you multiply this by this, you're going to get 156 degrees. Now let's move straight to theorem two. Now, this is the theory two. Now, don't mind my drawing, and I hope the understanding is the most important thing, so don't mind my drawing. Now, the theory two says that if a chord, because we have an invisible chord over here, right? If a chord, substance, move to the circle, right? And the same chord move to two points on the circumference. So it moves here and also moves here. So it's, the, the chord moves to this side and also moves to this side. It means that this angle here and this angle are the same. This angle and this angle are the same. And... I will steal a little from the theory A and make it my theory B. Now, the theory A says that the angle here is uh, 2 of the angle here is this angle. The same way over here. 2A, it will be called to X. And also, 2B, 2B will be called to what? X. So it means that the angles subtending here and here are the same. And... Two of this angle will give you this, and two of this angle will also give you this. That's what it means with the um, with the theory two. Let's take examples on it. Find why. Now we know from the theory that they say the angle here and the angle here are the same. So what was the name of this angle? This angle is called angle P R Q, and it is also equal to angle. P S Q. Therefore, P R Q equals eighty, and P S Q is also equal to what eighty degrees. That is all. That is all. We are telling them that you know what you are doing. So this angle and this angle are the same. No two ways about that. That is that is simple like that. They can confuse you by extending this one as a chord to confuse you, but don't be worried. Just know that there is a, if the chord is not there, there is an invisible one there. If it is there, fine. If it's not there, don't panic. It's the same thing. Are we good? Let's take another question. Okay, so this is the question. We are finding A, B, and C. We are finding A, B, and C. Now, we are moving straight to it. Now, with this one, we know that this is a, if I turn the book like this, we can see that this is a chord. This is a chord. And the chord substance an angle to the center. So it makes this one a radius. And make this one to a radius, right? So if we have here to be a radius and here to be a radius, sorry, here to be a radius and here to be a radius, it means that if we know this one, we can automatically know this one. Because it makes this angle triangle what? An isosceles triangle. So C is automatically 60 because this is an isosceles triangle. This line and this line are the same. So this triangle here is what? An isosceles triangle. 
are we good so this is c this is d this is a and this is b so triangle c d o is what an isosceles so the base must be the same so if the s is the yes also sister so now c is sister are we good now if c is sister if c is sister we can find this angle here we can find this angle here because this angle plus this angle plus this angle should give you 180 because it's a triangle so 60 that's for the c plus another 60 for this one plus let's put x here equals what 180 so we'll get 120 plus x equals 180 then we get x equals what 60 we'll get x equals what 60 now it means that getting here to be 60 you know, we are saying that the length of the radius is the same as the length of the word chord because uh, under triangles uh, uh, a collateral triangle has all sides to be equal and all angles to be equal so now that we have sister 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 it means that this one is what an equilateral what triangle are we good mm -hmm. but we started with what isosceles now we have ended with what a collateral because the angles are the same now another way we could solve for this one is that you see that this is a straight line this line is a straight line so the angles here will sum up to what 180 so if here is 120 120 plus x will give you 180 and we we'll still get what 60 degrees over here are we good now one more thing we want to find these two angles now this angle and the angle here are opposite this angle and this angle are opposite so here we also give you what 60 degrees so as this and this here will also give you what 120 are you good and if here is 60 if here is 60 we can find this and this because we are saying that this one is also a chord a chord and this is a radius from the same so it means that this and this are also what the same do you get it so automatically here it will also be 60 and here it will also be 60 why because because here is 60 and this is a radius and this is a radius the a radius is from the same chord so it makes here and here the same so let's say this is a and this is also a so we get 2a plus 60 equals what 180 if this is a and this is a because they are from the same radius so we will get we're going to get 2a equals 120 because this one will cross the equal sign subtract and you get 120 so we get a to be equal to 60 meaning this is 60 and this is also what 60 degrees are we good good now try this one for me after that you check your answer if you are right so we are finding you see that a chord is here subtending an angle to this side 55 and the same chord is subtending an angle to be to to, to this side. what I mean is the chord XY is moving points to the circumference over here that we have 55 and the same one is moving points over here that's the Z that we have Y and we said that from the theory 2 that if a chord moves a, a point to the circumference and also move a point to another circumference on the same uh, chord the angles are the same so let's come back to our question. So if this is 55, they are moving from the same chord to here and here. So it makes the Y also what? 55. But I want you to show working. Don't just write the answer. Show working and tell us why it is 55. Thank you very much. Now, this is the first part of this circle theorem. The second part will come soon. Kindly subscribe to the channel so that you'll be the first to, to know if I post the second part and probably the third part. I'm doing it gradually so that it will not be bulky. So thank you very much for watching and subscribe and click the notification icon because there are a lot coming. There are a lot coming. So subscribe to the channel. My name is Seb Watch and also thank you very much for subscribing. Shalom.